Instagram on Lauren Damage Facebook or Cosmopolitan's Facebook with Lauren and always pin it to our, the owner of the station and let y'all know what's going on for the week. But I wanted to say, first of all, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce my executive producer who is, we call him around here, Captain Bart because he's a pilot and he's a serious man. And I kind of figured it was time to introduce him because we banter back and forth. A lot of times when y'all hear me, my producer's giving me an evil look or I have to stop because he's taking me off the air. Um, and he's actually looking at me right now. It, it actually scares me sometimes. But um, we're coming on right quick. And before we have our wonderful guest on, I'm going to bash Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I told them that today, that we're bashing them. Are you upset with Blue Cross Blue Shield? Well, I don't know if it's that or the yeah, Affordable Health Care Act. Okay, well, we it's can't. costing us a fortune. Okay, well, you know what? We can't get into that. I already told I you. I know. No I don't, politics. I, get, I say no politics on my show. However, one of my friends who was over here earlier today, and I felt very sorry for, is in need of medicine, which she has been taking for seven or eight years, and she needs it. And she went to go pick it up today, which was normally $40, and it was $481. And she called the insurance company, and they told her, Oh, well, we switched as of January 1st. Now you owe $481 to get your medicine. So last time she got withdrawn for the medicine, she ended up in the hospital. And this is my friend. I'm actually very healthy. I just finished running. But um, I'm very upset with that. I don't like the way the programs are going, guys. I don't like things. Um, you know, this show is about empowering people and making them stand up for for their rights and believing in themselves and being healthy and this, that, and the other. And I was upset that she um, is just trying to stay healthy and she was unable because of, I consider, it's the medical people, the pharmacists, what if not the pharmacists, the medical providers uh, that develop these medicines that are creating this issue. Uh, what is, are you having a panic attack? Where are you going? He's walked off the set. Where are you going? He's about to sneeze. Oh, okay. So, Maybe pharmaceutical companies? Yeah, Where, that's... Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. There's been a lot of TV shows, movies about that. I, I can't think of them right now, but anyway, Captain Bart um, has had to take the wrath of me talking about insurance. And when I hung up the phone with uh, Blue Cross, with my girlfriend was there because she was panicked and couldn't talk for herself. So I, you know, me as a talker, tried to talk for her. And... Um, I just wanted to tell them when I hung up the phone, I said, just want FYI, I'm going to be talking about you on my show tonight because I don't think it's right that what if she's diabetic? What if she has some kind of uh, traumatic injury, like a brain injury, and she has to go in to get medicine, and all of a sudden, you know, she can't get it? It's, it's not cool. No, not cool at all. Okay, and then we're talking to a southern gentleman. All right, guys, that was my bashing. That's about as far as I go. I'm sorry. You know what? When y'all get me on a roll, I really go on a roll. Like, you should hear me before we start the show. Sometimes he looks at me and he goes, we're on air. Shut up. But tonight's guest, because I caught a lot of slack, because y'all thought I was just thinking about New Year's resolution as we're going to be beautiful and we're going to do this. And it's really not. It just happened to be the way the, thing, the, way the cards played out is that I was able to get hold of certain people at certain times. I'm really working on everything. And for some reason, at the, I looked at statistics and January is a lot of times for divorce. I don't know if people decide, oh, it's the new year. I'm going to get rid of my mate and search out for a new one. Or it's a tax deduction. It's not a tax. I don't know. But I was looking at statistics. And um, there's a you know there's a lot of things that happen when you get a divorce. And tonight is about how you approach divorce. We've talked about and I've blogged about a thousand times about my divorce and then it tore me up and this that and the other. However, it created who I am now, which is entertaining my lovely people and people I love and I love y'all. But it created the person I am now that's able to entertain you. But it creates divorce changes. Uh, certain When you go through a traumatic event, it changes you forever. It changes your children. It changes your family. It changes the family dynamic, how your extended family, your father, your mother, your sister, and brother, how they all see you and how your friends see you. It is a traumatic event. So it's not just like the death of your marriage. It's reevaluating your place in all your relationships. 
And that is the difficult thing, is that some people all of a sudden, you know, their friends are choosing the other side. And, if you know, sometimes, not with me, but sometimes in other cases, the family's going, well, what did you do wrong? Or, you know, or choose, it's, it's a bunch of side taking. So you have to prepare yourself. And you can fold, or you can, I don't know if y'all looked at my account, it's like a mountain lion that's up against the wall. You can jump, or you can fight. And, um person that I'm about to have on is about to fi is a fighter and I can't say who she is but she's a major player she's in a major uh, a major attorney in Chicago and other areas but she went through an abusive marriage and she is changing the world because of it and I would like to introduce my guest and we're going to call you Miss V is that okay that's fine hey Miss V hey she and because she's such a powerful attorney, she has been working nonstop for about 72 hours, and I've dragged her in here to the set. Um, tell me about your divorce. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go right into it. Let's go into your divorce. What during your marriage prompted you to get a divorce, and what in your marriage prompted you to become the successful woman that you've been, you've become? Uh, um, it was just a very physically and emotionally abusive marriage um, and you know as people know I mean it, it's the emotional abuse that is the worst you know the the bruises heal um, on you know on your physical self but the um, the bruises um, on on your psyche and just getting beaten down and being told that you're worthless and you're pathetic and if it wasn't for you know him um, I would be a bad lady and it's you know I mean you really start at one point, you know, start internalizing it and really believing that, and I did get to that point, and um, and I was seriously thinking, well, maybe my children would be better without me in the picture. I mean, I got that low, um, and I actually filed for divorce three times, and I and as a typical abuser, I mean, stereotypical abuser, uh, he would, you know. Say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and give me jewelry. We would go on great trips, and I kept going back. Um, but you know, the fourth time was the charm, and um, I did it. And and actually, that's when I went to law school. Um, I filed for divorce and applied to law school, and I was still going to law school while I was going through my divorce. And this be tell me, like, um, because you are successful, I wish y'all could see who she is. She's beautiful and she is major beautiful she used to be a model i'm just gonna fyi y'all on that um but she's beautiful and she's really intelligent and my curiosity is that a lot of people think that you know we see things on we're like how is she abused she's so smart she's so beautiful she had everything going tell me i mean was this like a spur of the moment somebody you dated and you decided to get married to or was this somebody you had dated for a long time well, I mean, we, we were high school sweethearts, so it was somebody who, obviously, I had been um, involved with since we were 16 years old. Um, you know, so it, it was like we were, you know, we, we just we grew apart, and then, um, again, the, the controlling factor kicked in. I mean, were there signs when y'all were dating? And high, that's what I'm saying. Like, typically, we think of people that are in abusive relationships have low self-esteem. So were there signs during when, when you were in high school, or did it just happen? Because I know for me, it just happened, like, immediately after you commit. So um, how, how did that work for you? You know, it, it is twenty twenty hindsight. I mean, um, there may have been minor red flags um, that I just, you know, brushed off as, you know, as anomalies and, you know, just that, that's not the person I know. Um, and it definitely um, kicked in um, once the I do's were said. Uh, I, the, the first time I filed for divorce, I mean, we were probably married less than a year and a half. Um, and it's just, you know, you... And I've always wanted to go to law school, but I put everything on hold um, to, you know, to have my children. And um, that's why it's like, you know what, I'm not going to be the bag lady that this, you know, guy says I'm going to be without him. And that I'm just so, you know, dependent upon him. And I swore to myself that I will never again be dependent upon another human being for a roof over my head and food in my children's mouth. And I was going to go out and and do what I needed to do and make sure that I was going to do it on my own. And when you say, because there's a lot of women out there that suffer through abuse that are looking up to you right now, when you say that um, 
I, when I fouled, I fouled, and it was just it. Because there was a moment that happened that I was like, this is it. I'm falling. Um, for you, when you say you fouled four different times, I mean, were, well, what were those four th that were able to lure you back into? I mean, you know, I have to be able to express to my my listeners that, you know, they maybe they have filed for divorce and they go back. I mean, you need to tell them from your experience the four times that you went back, why did you go back and what a mistake those, was it a mistake to go back? Are we trying to give it a second chance or did you think that you were going to go to counseling and it was going to change? What was it that made you go back? All of the above. I mean, um, again, you know, he, he was always so sincere and was always, you know, bringing me the gifts of jewelry or, you know, would, would go over into the Caribbean or something, um, you know, with, with promises of, oh, you know, I'll never do it again. Well, you know, and, and every time I filed for divorce, I had a restraining order. I mean, I actually, it was to the extent that I, you know, was, he was living under a, a restraining order. Um, and wow. then I just believed him. I, I would look in the newspaper and, and see, you know, the, you know, the announcements of these couples that made it for 25 years and 50 years. And I would hang my hat on that. And I would look at those pictures and say, you know what? They had to go through trials and tribulations. I mean, they had, you know, probably had rough patches that they could get through. I can do this too. Well, I didn't, when um, we did have to go to a custody evaluator, you know, for custody. And, you know, the subject of abuse came up. Um, you know, the custody evaluator asked him, you know, how many times, you know, have you, you know, hit her? And he's like, well, um, she may have had um, a, few bruises, a few bruises now and then, but, you know, everybody gets bruised up now and then. And the custody evaluator just looked at him and said, no, that never happens. It's never supposed to happen. And, I mean, it was like a light bulb that went off in, in my ex-husband's head. I mean, he just thought that, well, everybody gets a few bruises now and then. And which is odd because his parents That's did what not... That's what I say, with his exactly, parents? His parents were not um, abusive to each other. Um, so I don't know where that mindset came from, uh, but it was, like, very eye-opening, obviously, for the custody evaluator. Um, and I just got to the point where I am not that person. I mean, I again, I was tired of being called pathetic and fat when I weighed, you know, 115 pounds and, you know, worthless. And, you know, you do start to think that. I remember, you know, cradling my, you know, six-month-old son in my, the rocking chair and, you know, again, thinking I might be better off, they might be better off without me, you know, and I was ready to, you know, right. to put it all in. And uh, and thank goodness I didn't. I, I, I don't know what exactly clicked in me um, that decided, you know, I can do this. I mean, I've always been a strong person, and this person has beaten me down um, emotionally to the point where, wow, I started to believe him. And it's like, no, I never have been that person, and I don't deserve this. <clears throat> and, you know, like I said, I filed for divorce, applied to law school, and I was working a full-time job, and I would, you know, drive um, into Chicago and work by job and then go to law school at night and then come back home and take care of your children take care of my children and I mean it was I went to law school uh, and I would study at night I mean when I put the boys to bed uh, that's what I would put the coffee on and um, my children knew that oh mom must be studying because I I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm a tea drinker. So right. as soon as the coffee pot came on and mom uh -huh. was actually drinking coffee, she was going to be pulling, you know, a big study night. Uh huh. That's um. I, I, and guys, I think it's just amazing because when I what his what the way that we connected is that we had spoken that we had gotten divorced around like the same time with our children, and I chose to stay home with my kids and. <clears throat> be a stay-at-home mom with my kids. Um, because of the things that went on in the marriage, I felt like they needed me more. But now coming out of it, I look at Miss B and I'm like, oh my God, she's amazing. Like Sometimes I'm like sitting there going, I can't believe this. like one of my best friends. Like She's such a career woman and so put together and stuff. But she's been so damaged like me. Um, once you're damaged, um, that never goes away. I mean, you can heal, it's, but it's like um, scars that you get on your body if you've had stitches or something, and it, and it heals up, but you still get that little lump of uh, scar tissue on there. You can heal up, but it's always there. And so when it's always there, you look at the world differently. And that was a thing with, with I was worried about introducing it to 
friends and family and you know my uh, my kids I, I guess knew stuff that went on but I was concerned that they would always see that scar in me that they couldn't see past the scars left and I couldn't see past the scars that I had to move forward and has that I know we've discussed it you have you know we have these issues that haunt us at night our demons and stuff um, do you still feel like now that impacts relationships with your children? Does that does what went on in your marriage impact your children's relationship with others? And does it impact the relationships with you now? Now that you've become successful and you've overcome that, is it still playing a part in your role of your life that you've chosen? Oh yeah, I mean, well, my, my younger son was only two, um, so he doesn't ever remember mom and dad living in the same house. Mm -hmm. um, so. And um, it, it's, you know, and then my older son, I, I you know, they just, um, he observed some of the abuse, and he's the one who actually told me that, Mom, you need to go into counseling. You need to talk to somebody. And that just, you know, took my breath away, um, that here is my, you know, preteen child, you know, saying, Mom, you know, it's, you may not know it, but it's, done something to you and I know it's impacted um, by my children because you know my my eldest son is you know a younger adult right now and he's turns about getting married himself I mean he obviously has not had the best role models and he's you know you know that going to put off getting married and you know just because he he doesn't see the upside um, to marriage which is you know disappointing and and I have built up like such defense mechanisms and emotional walls um, it's you know it's I'm very apprehensive about getting into another relationship because I just don't want to get hurt again mm -hmm. um, and you know that I've, I've definitely you know, had relationships but mm -hmm. it's I don't let myself feel as deeply as I should and could and you know, it takes time. And, and that's true, and I'm saying for, for people that have had not only abusive relationships, but uh, relationships where they've, you've been hurt or really bad emotionally or damaged or whatever, um, it does affect, it, it trickles down, it's a trickle effect. And, you know, I know, speaking personally with Ms. V, that she's had a lot of opportunities to be with people. But um, no offense, I love you to death. But I know that subconsciously you push people away. And, and you know, I did the same thing. I like, I, I want to have this life of, I want to watch Lifetime and be like this, that, and the other. But as soon as a commitment issue comes, you know, it's that, you know, you commit, it's, it's this, wait a minute, because you're afraid that you're going to have to go through that battle again. And it is a battle, I feel, you know, it's a battle for your livelihood, it's a battle for your soul, it's a battle for who you are, and it, that's that's the theme of tonight. You know, we've addressed, and we're going to have on after about, about Ms. V, is that we are going to have on a guest that is gone through a divorce and kind of did the same thing that she did, which was what I would recommend anybody to do what they did, not what I did, which was a stay-at-home mom, and all of a sudden you're slapped in in the middle of 40, and you've got to find a job, and you haven't worked because you've been taking care of children, and you know you're forced into the career, and they're like, "Oh, you're too old." So I had to forge a new career. But the two people that I'm talking to tonight are successful because you know what? They did a lot of hard work, and even though you were going through the traumatic events of your life, you were. See, I can't imagine working a full-time job, dropping my kids off, and going to loss. I was just shattered. I was in a fetal position. So I can't imagine the fact that you were doing all that at one time. That just is a testimony of how brave and smart you are. Well, and it, you, just, you, you do it, um, just don't get up and put your feet on the floor, and it becomes like you don't even think about it. If I thought that much about it, um, I don't know if I could have done it. I mean... Um, Friends in the neighborhood, I mean, they were in awe of how I was getting this done. And I just didn't think about it. I just did it as a matter of rote. Wasn't it that a lot of the 
husbands told their wives they couldn't associate with you anymore because you were becoming Miss Independent? Yes. Um, they were, um, a and this is in Chicago, people. <laughs> there were uh, a, a, a few um, marriages, you know, where the women were um, also dependent upon their, you know, successful um, wealthy husbands. And the husbands saw what I was doing, and they were um, concerned that their wives might get the same you know, crazy idea that they could actually, you know, go out and live on their own. Um, and I was, they, you know, was, a couple of them confided in me that said, you know, my husband would really prefer that, you know, we don't hang out as much as we used to. Okay, and not that I'm going to be a Dr. Phil or Jerry Springer, but maybe at this moment I am. What exactly is the one moment in the worst abuse that you felt like really shook your world where you're like, wait a minute? This is this isn't right. Well, I mean, I I would have to say that the most astounding. I mean, this is even difficult to you know to convey. Um, was one night um, my ex husband and I you know came home. Yeah, we, we were out partying and um, you know a, a, an argument ensued, which was the norm. And he actually pinned me down on the dining room floor and pinned down my hands and knees, you know how you would do like when, when, you, when you start to tickle, tickle somebody? Tickle somebody, yeah. Only, um, he actually put his finger down his throat and tried <sighs> to vomit in my face. I mean, that is how extreme, and it's just like, you've got to be kidding me. And I just remember we had a really nice marble table in the dining room, and I tried to pull on that marble table so hard on his head. I, But, of course... It was too heavy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a marble table. I mean, I'm not going to be able to do that, especially a little knee with one arm. Um, but that was like the most extreme. I mean, I, again, there were no physical scars. No. But the emotional, emotional damage. Just, oh, to think that somebody could be that depraved to actually do something like to do that. Something like that. And, and when we talk about the scars, and we talked about, yes, guys, if you're out there, the physical scars, if anybody raises a hand, if anybody threatens you, any, anything, any signs, you need to walk away. I'm telling you, if you think that you're going to save somebody or change somebody by marriage, I, you know, I can, I'm going to like preaching to the choir because how many shows are there that out there that says that? But my journey is, is that, you know, we've been through this. I've, I've, uh, been through this, you know, I've dated so many people that you'll never know who I'm talking about. Um, and I've been married twice, so you'll never know who I'm talking about. But, you know, I've been through it a lot. And the damage and the scars d I see in my children's eyes, and that's what, you know, it is not just you. You're, you're not fighting for just your self-worth and your yourself. If you have children, you're fighting for them, and they're never going to be whole again. I mean, I know that people say, I want to stay so I have a cute family and this, that, and the other. It doesn't matter. Your family is broken. As soon as they see that tearing apart in any kind of, any kind of abuse, a child is broken at that point. If they see that, they're broken. Um, they're never going to go back to thinking that it's mommy and daddy and everything's good. It's something that lingers in them. Don't you agree? Well, yeah, and, and that's why, you know, when I was when I was going to law school and, and, and working, it's like um, I wasn't there for them as much as I wanted to be, but I also wanted to be a role model for them to show them that, you know, you can get through adversity and, you you know, and you can, you know, you, you study hard and you work hard and you, you, you put the, the bad stuff behind you. And I tried, again, to be a good role model um, in, in that manner for my boys so, you know, they would be less likely to um, to go that that place. And in saying that, and I, I probably touched on it before because this is such a raw topic um, with us, but I found that it took it took me a long time. It, it was you know, and I had the perfect child. You know, I from the outside I had the perfect childhood, and growing up I had, at the outside of perfect. For some reason, I had really low self esteem. I don't know what what stems from that. Probably early divorce and. You know, uh, mother left, abandonment, mom issues, got mom issues. Um, so, you know, I had low self-esteem. Uh, but there was, I didn't feel that, whatever. People looking in at me probably thought, oh, she has it all. She's great. She's an athlete. She's, you know, pretty, and she's got this, that, and the other. But it, it really wasn't that way. And um, did you feel like at any point, like you felt like you 
deserve this? I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's hard for people like me. Like, I can see me, but I'm looking at you, and you're beautiful, and you're so smart, and we were going over what she's doing right now. But how, like, why was that acceptable for you? Is it just because you had dated him and... I, again, it was, you know, being told how worthless and pathetic you are, you start to believe like, oh, you know, that it, oh, this, I do deserve this, you know, I shouldn't have, you know, left, you know, the junk drawer in such disarray. Um, you know, you start really, it's like walking on eggshells. It's like, okay, what's going to set him off this time? Um, and it, it, it's, it's just learned behavior. Um, it's stimulus response. I mean, that's exactly what happens. And, and guys, and, and I'll say this, I, I kind of lost track of mine because this is so personal to me, but it does affect every relationship. If you've been in this, it affects your friendship relationships, the way you uh, interact with your family, friends. And it is amazing to me, even after I, you know, me personally or things that I've talked about have come out and said, some people just don't understand and they have no empathy and no understanding and it really took a lot for me to do this radio show it really took a lot for me to do the stuff that I've done because I have to like pull and like a, what do you call it a onion I'm pulling I'm pulling layers off and you will get to know me more and more but it is um, it's a hard journey coming from that because a lot of people turn their back on them because it's not pretty. And, and people now just want pretty and perfect. And so when you're a little bit damaged and you're a little bit scarred up, they, you know, they just would rather go hang out with another chick that can just go shopping all day and isn't crying and isn't dealing with stuff. There's a few chosen people that will be your soulmates that will help you through it. Don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, yeah, you, you definitely, you know, get your core support system and you know, who is willing to be in that support system and who will actually support you in, in what you're trying to accomplish. And uh, that, is, that is key. And I must say, just don't, anybody who's listening, don't wait four times um, to file for divorce and to go through with it. Um, you know, there are textbook abusers out there and it, they, they will not stop. It will not stop. And you know, Does it stop today? Have you, have you, has he released you today? That's a lot no. of times with abusers. They will not release. Once they've been able to abuse you, they won't release you. No. I, I, I've been divorced for 17 years now. My divorce was filed on the first day of the millennium. I mean, I can't believe it. Um, and yes, I've had a few people try to put rings on my finger. And I'm just like, I'm just so afraid of have, being controlled again and um, being under somebody's thumb. Um, but... You know, you just can't let that happen. And you, know, you, 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 we are all better than what somebody is degrading us to. Um, I mean, when it's it's malicious and it's not right, I mean, you get to start believing it, and you've got to somehow stop doing, stop believing that. I mean, just come up with with that inner strength that we all have, and you got to find it, and you can do it. I mean, it's it, it's it's difficult. I mean, I wouldn't. I've always said I wouldn't wish this divorce process on anyone, not even my worst enemy. Except, of course, my ex-husband is the only person I would want to go through this hell that I went through. Um, but, yeah, I, it, it's, it's, it's difficult and it's challenging. But once you get to the other side, um, you wonder why didn't I do this sooner? Well, and not everybody has, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you print paint you a, a picture full of tulips, pink tulips, it's not an easy journey. Look, when you think that, like, well, she has a radio show, and she's a major attorney, and this, that, the other, you don't know. Like, we sat here and talked about that how difficult it is for us to sleep at night because we're haunted by the same things that have happened in our past. I mean, guys, I, I don't go to sleep at night easily. I don't stay home at night easily. Um, and neither does she. So we're don't think that it's going to be an easy path. We've traveled a difficult highway, highway from hell. That should be our song for tonight. Um, to get where we are now, and you can do it. And I can't tell you the the fact that you know I was losing hair and ulcers and whatever else. And I saw somebody today. I went to the doctor just check up, guys. But I went to the doctor and I walked in. And he was like, oh. Well, apparently something happened because last time he saw me, I was like so sickly and I had to even have my son drive me to the hospital. And he goes, something happened. I was like, yeah, well, me happened. I happened. So um, 
and you happened to be, and I'm so happy that you happened, and I happened, and we just happened to be together. So I want to thank you for sharing your story with us, and I love you. And, um, yeah, guys, she's got to fly out of here and do a huge presentation. She's been preparing for 72 hours. So let's give her a round of applause in your houses right now and thank Miss V. I love you, and um, I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. I, thanks a lot, and, you know, girl power, lady. Girl power, yeah. Powerpuff girls, yeah. All right, so um, we're cutting out for a commercial break, and um, I'll be back with you soon, guys. All right? Hey, Joe Rocks, it's Louis Ava, straight from Shite Town. Call and talk about our website, www.hotsaucevault.com. We got everything you can think of out there, Joe. The hottest hot sauces, not for wimps, mild, medium sauces. We got barbecue sauces, snacks, some of our gift ideas and gag gifts, so you can go out and check us out at www.hotsaucevault.com. Hope to talk to you again on your radio show. Kick ass show, had a great time last week. Hope to hear from you soon. Take care, Joe. Hotsaucevault.com. Hello, this is Kimberly Murray. Catch me every week on Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern for my perspective and updates on politics and current events on Night Talk with Joe Rocks, exclusively on TuneIn and Armed Radio Global. Are you hangry? Know the signs. Uncontrollable yelling. Why aren't you egg rolls? Hallucination. Sushi. Pants discomfort. I hate you, pants. Hangry. It can happen to anyone. Fortunately, there's E24, the app that tells hunger to shut up. Egg rolls. Thanks, Snoop. E24. In my medical opinion, it's the best mother way to order food online, baby. And now, another fresh insight from Roger Berkowitz, president and CEO of Legal Seafoods. If your wife can't take the time to test your tuna for purity, then why should you take the time to come to a complete stop before letting her out of the car. Just saying. Legal Seafoods. If it isn't fresh, it isn't legal. So join your channel. Hey guys, we're back, we're back, we're back. Um, I want to talk about just having my guest on and what a huge deal that is for people that have been abused and that are you know have are coming out of the closet <laughs> it's coming out of the closet that's not the proper word but that is that are opening up about abuse because we we stay quiet about abuse and a lot of I spoke with someone that I actually went to go speak to a woman's shelter woman women women's shelter I guess that's what we're going to say I actually went to go speak with one and she was telling me um, and she was pretty prestigious and she was you know somebody you wouldn't think that anything was happening with and she was I said well you need to talk to the school system and she was like I can't let the school system know anything but that is a selfish move because the problem with abuse and the problem with uh, divorce, I mean, yes, you know, 50, what is it, 50% of divorces cases. Um, but the problem is what we're talking about today is abuse and overcoming abuse is that you have to talk about it. If you're a teacher and you have children at school, it is a selfish thought to think to yourself, I don't want to tell anybody because I don't want anybody to know. That's a selfish thought because your child has changed at that minute. And um, you have to love your children enough to jeopardize maybe a little bit of embarrassment, a little shyness to, to say, hey, this is going on at my house and I need you to um, check on my kid. And watch them and let, let them know if something's happening. And so that is a huge deal for somebody to stand up. And for her to stand up and say, you know, here I am. 
I am a successful woman and I've been through abuse and I have moved forward. And then I spoke with someone the other day that was, um, what do we say? Very successful, very beautiful. And, and she literally would be somebody that is, it'd be, I'm not saying it's Donald Trump's wife or anything like that, but she looks like Donald Trump's wife. And she came to me and she was like, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm like, okay, you're uh, Ivana uh, Trump. Who are you? You're so gorgeous. What are you doing? It happens in everything, every person. So don't feel bad. I guess we're cutting to, uh, all right, now we're going to get my cone. Okay. Cause you know what? These hand signals, I'm not a pilot. This doesn't mean anything to me. They, they, right. they actually people ready to call Mike. Yes. They actually, <laughs> I know I'm like, I'm jumping from one thing to another, but they actually do hand signals to me and, and face signals. And I, I'm not a pilot. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, Mike, you're on the air live, so don't say any cuss words or anything. <laughs> I'm telling Hi, you, Lauren. this is the tightest it's been for me. Like, I'm really about, I'm going to go get one of those barf bags because we were laughing that I'm going to call him uh, Captain Bart, but I need a barf bag because it has been a rough, choppy plane ride. It has not so been far. that choppy. It's been choppy. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, yeah, Bart's used to that as, as he, a pilot. He's used to choppy. He's and, used to and choppy. And I'm not used to. It. He's throwing me hand signals like I'm in the Marines, and I'm like, what? No, it's like wind it up. I'm like, what the hell are you saying? No, you were doing eye signals and something like this. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Because we're coming from this deep subject, and I'll but, but if I show her a note, she quits talking and read the note. <laughs> Then why don't you have a note? <laughs> There's 17 notebooks in front of us. Why aren't you writing me a note? Why are you shooting me? Because hands? you'll quit talking. <laughs> no, well, that's true. For a second. But literally, it was like... Duh, 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 duh. Um, so, Mike, we love Mike. Mike's irregular. And we're laughing. This, it, we shouldn't be laughing because we really just had a really serious moment. I don't know if you were listening before, but we mm -hmm. had a serious moment. Um, it's really hard when I'm... Don't shoot me another hand signal. Was that another cut it? Or you just scratched your neck. Okay. He just scratched his neck. I thought he was telling me to stop. <laughs> you know what? Just go into a plastic bubble. Don't talk to me anymore. So, <laughs> all right, Mike. We have been mm -hmm. discussing divorce. And not divorce like a negative way. We are dis di discussing positive effects from divorce. Um, coming into your second skin, yeah. per se. And we just spoke with a woman that came from abuse and major physical abuse and who is a major, I can't even tell you, I wish I, wish I could actually sit down and tell you that she's like been at the Senate and the Senate and the other um, attorney that's mm -hmm. been in Chicago, but that she suffered abuse. And then now here she is where she is now because of it. And you, my friend, have went through a divorce and you're looking mighty hot in your catalog. Um, but have wow. developed a new clothing line and a book. And that all came because you mm -hmm. decided after your divorce, hell, I'm going to live my dream, right? Yeah, well, that's how my journey started. When I got handed the papers, I said, well, let's start a new life. And it all just happened. But, it, you know, it, it's not like I should say it all just happened. It's been a lot of work. It, you, you do know, a lot of work. It's been a lot of work. Because yes, I'm going to tell you something, seven. Mike. I'm going to nab who's ever your assistant because every freaking time I think that I'm being good first thing in the morning to do my thing. And you're already got like two ads up on Instagram, not ads, but things up on Instagram. I'm like, There's no assistant told me. I know. Like, what, do you, are you a vampire? I mean, do you ever sleep or are you just like one of those? Because literally guys, he's going, 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 going. And it is amazing to me because he, he, he has a book now on Amazon. I'm going to let you throw that book out, Mike. What's what's the name of the book? Tell me all about it. The name of the book is the tag of the company, the attitude that defines you. And that's pretty much our tag. So that's his tag. So go on Amazon. You can read his book. And it's it's a book. Blood, blood ugly, blood ugly. The attitude that defines you. And. You know, y'all know I'm doing my southern accent. Y'all know that um, 
I'm the spokesperson for Blood Ugly, and I wear it, and I'm actually sitting in it right now. Y'all saw the video with me with a, a, a little black outfit on, but I'm in my sweatshirt that's glued to me that's Blood Ugly. Um, Mike and I uh, binded over um, our second skin. I call it the second skin, where we begin mm -hmm. our second life after our you know, divorces, and, and I, I'm really happier than I've ever been. It's, you're so empowered once you, once you um, have gone through a traumatic event and then you come out of it, you're so empowered that you have really engulfed all this horrible stuff and you have come out as a warrior. And that's why I love Blood Ugly because that, that's what I see it as, is like a warrior. I feel like I am freaking scarred up and I'm okay with scars. I feel like I'm just like one of those natives in Africa that has all the scars and I'm running around and I'm happy because I am so strong from coming from what I've come through. And I feel like you did that too and you just decided one day, hey, I, I'm, I'm working upholstery, but you know what? I'm going to run a business now. Uh, I'm, I'm divorced now, I've got a kid, and I'm going to run a business. Isn't that kind of what you felt like? It just came. I, it, I, it was a crazy idea that I just started playing with, and it's all been evolving. And right now, um, at my phase where we're going to launch the company, the book is going to help launch the company. The products will be on the, the website in a matter of, you know, a week or two. So... You know, it's it, it was just a crazy idea that I put to fruition and made it all happen. But it's been a, it's been a hell of a lot of fun doing it. Well, like, because I, really I was like, and y'all don't know the backstory between Mike and I because we don't get to talk a lot because we both have these crazy careers that we're in, we're like in our midlife, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say people because he names his age in his book. He's older than me, so FYI. <laughs> Y'all don't be, like, Googling that because I am actually a little younger than him, um, even though he looks a little better on his thing. Um, and it cracks me up because people are like, can I see your shirt again? Like that Blood Ugly where I was pumping iron. And they were like, mm -hmm. can I need to see your shirt again? Um, but it is a, it is a lot of work. It is ever-consuming. And, you know, don't think that you're going to come out like, you, you, all right, you have a dream. All right, let's just say whoever, you want to be a singer, you want to be a, uh, you know, your pilot or a radio show host or design your own clothing, whatever. It isn't easy, and you can expect hiccups, and you can expect problems, and that's where the warrior in you comes out because Mike didn't just all of a sudden say, I want to, you know, design this. He actually got sued by people, and we're not going to say who, but he got sued because his, mm -hmm. his logo looked a little like this. It was a fight to become what he wanted I mean if you want to if you come out of a marriage and, and this goes to not just people that are divorced but anybody if you come out of a bad situation poverty abuse uh, you know some kind of traumatic event um, you know I, I deal a lot with the PTSD with the soldiers you come out of an event and you try for that goal that you want you cannot give up at the first roadblock, right? I mean, if you had given mm -hmm. up at that at that lawsuit, just think where you had where you wouldn't be now. I mean, you got a book, you got this huge following, you've got this huge clothing line, and you know you were you coming from your divorce. And if you let that one thing stop you because it was financially burdened or it was emotionally burdened, think that you, you're crazy, crazy cute business would not be where it is, right? It's true, but I, I have to say, it, it's all in a person's mindset. You know, you can't be afraid to take that that next step and make something happen. I, I always believe you can't second, you shouldn't second guess yourself. You know, if you really feel strongly about something and you know it's right and you feel it in your heart, go for it. Do it. If you have that passion, if you really feel it and you've getting You've been getting positive feedback, and, and you've got friends and family and people that say, oh, I, I, your idea is great. I, I love it. Where can I get it? And if you're getting positive feedback, if, if you have that passion, people just go for it. Get, put that spark in your life. Put that, put that idea to, to work and, 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 you know, make it happen. And okay. don't let anything stop you. And I'm going to be at the other 
spectrum from Mike. <laughs> I'm uh-huh. actually at the other spectrum, Mike, because when I was doing it, here I am in a small town. See, you're in New Jersey. Now, I wish I was there with you. I know I have a ton, 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 ton of followers in New York and tons of my friends in New York would love to be in New York, FYI, if anybody's out there listening. Um, but when I started... I just decided one day I was going to be famous and I was going to do something that's going to change people's lives. And I kept Mm -hmm. saying that to everybody in this small town that I live in. They're like, no way, no way, no way. You're not going to do anything. You're not going to do anything. And to this day, um, you know, probably while we're sitting here, we got 700, 800,000 listeners listening to us right now. And I have followers all over internationally, Italy, France, you know, all over the place, Greece. And, to this day, no of my, there's several of close friends, but most of the majority of the people that are around me will not acknowledge the path that I've traveled. Um, so you can't always just think, well, if, you're, if people are supporting you or people are telling you to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I feel like for me personally, I would have stayed that Stepford Southern Bell person that was being what she's supposed to be, which was, you know, Stepford Southern Bell, which was teach school or teach Sunday, you know, you're divorced. So you're going to do one or two things. You're going to teach Sunday school or you're going to teach school, you know, or you're going to sell clothes. You know, there was like a line that you could cross as being somebody from a uh, affluent area that had certain standards and unwritten bylaws of things that were expected of you. I've completely, as far as me, live in this this place that I'm completely not what anybody would be. And I'm okay with that. I feel like I'm a trailblazer. I moved forward. Nobody thought I could ever do what I, you know, I've got 10,000 something followers. Nobody ever thought that that would be me. Um, To hear my phone going after trying to get me to, I broke the mold. And and it's funny now because people, will not acknowledge that. I mean, they're just like, oh, what are you doing? I know good and well you know what I was doing because you don't know that I can see when you're, you know, (laughs) following me. I know what you're doing. So the fact of the matter is, yes, Mike had a lot of support. I didn't. It is a fire inside of you that you need to express. And, uh, you know, um, she's she's not listening right now, and I'm going to whisper. But my daughter is an amazing writer. And y'all mark my words. One day, she's going to be like the next Edgar Allan Poe or William Shakespeare. I'm not just saying that because she's my kid. She's an amazing writer. Right now, she doesn't see it. It's really hard when you're in the trenches. Mike, I know you agree with me. When you're in the trenches of... Mm-hmm. Uh, divorce or trying to recoup mm-hmm. your financial repair from a divorce or you're in, you know, some kind of, you know, coming back from the war, Afghanistan, Iraq. I've dealt with, with guys. I love my vet, veterans. I love y'all guys. You know I love y'all. And I'm with y'all all the way. But when y'all come home, you know, all of a sudden trying to start a path where every, you feel like everybody's against you and they don't recognize your strengths, Sometimes it's just you just got to forge a new path. You're going to war again. If they don't recognize your strength and you don't have people supporting you, you're at war to prove yourself right. And that's how I feel like. I feel like I'm a warrior because I feel like I fought the fight. And even though y'all don't give me my victory, I've got a victory internationally. And I love that. And you had support from your friends and your family. You just got to put the blinders on. Just put the blinders on and go with it. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't matter, you know, even if you're not getting that support, you know what you want to do, you know what you need to accomplish. You know how you're going to do it, and you know what inter- what what path you have to take to get there. And, so, and, you know, like I said, you broke the mold, and, and you're changing everything, and you're making your life, you know, as successful as you can right now. And, and as your success grows and grows, you pull people up you know, with people you. are going to see. Yeah, people well, are going to, you know, like you, you're, going, you're going to see, people are going to start hanging on. And, yeah, that's what I, I talked about is that every time I get up, I get knocked down a whole lot. I, I Yeah, gals, you don't realize I get knocked down a whole lot. There ain't, there are not a lot of nights like my producer's going to sit here that he doesn't have to listen to me wailing to him about, wait, 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 something happened to me. Wait, 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 wait. And no sympathy from the pilot man. But um, there is a lot of times that that happens, and you just have to, like, 
you know, move it forward, put it aside. But there's also things that Mike and I talked about uh, in our personal conversations, and I'm, I'm not revealing anything major, but um, that a lot of times it's just there's a door that opens, and you got to run through it. And I mm-hmm. kept pounding, pounding, pounding on being a teacher. You know, I was trying to get teacher jobs. I was trying to do this job, and I was trying to do this, and nothing was opening up. And meanwhile, they were calling me to write movies, and they were calling me to – to edit scripts and I was like okay well, and then they called me for a radio show you know and I just you know went to the doors that were open I quit pounding on the doors that were closed and I walked through the doors were open in my life you know what I, like I said I'm kind of like the ostrich at the zoo you know I really don't fit in anywhere I'm kind of a bird kind of a reptile kind of everything I don't really fit in but I'm in my own skin I'm in my second skin I'm in my own skin so Whatever anybody takes from me emotionally or physically, I know I did the best I could do. And I've done a wonderful right. job with what I can do. And I think that mm-hmm. your brand, you know, I read his book, guys, and I read it in one day. And I re-read, I read it like four times in one day. But, you know, I'm a fast reader. Um, it's very uplifting. It's very motivational. It's very unbelievable that he came out of a divorce. You know, divorce sucks, but came out of divorce a happier person, I feel like, and a motivational speaker and the most amazing freaking clothes ever. Um, and my friend, and we bonded over a terrible experience, but both of us overcame it to be better people. Don't you feel like? Oh, without a doubt. And actually, the, the book's gotten quite a few good uh, five-star reviews. Mm. Well, I'll be on that. He's a five, you're a five-star person. And don't start <laughs> shooting me. Like, here he is. We're doing hand signals. You need to just write me a note. Okay. Okay, no hand signals. <laughs> so I got, just write me a freaking note. Um, okay, I know we got five minutes. We, I, got five, I got four and a half minutes with you, Mike. So, um mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, his book is amazing, and he actually, Mike, inspired me to do my own book because I had been approached several times to write my own book, and um, I didn't because every time I started it, there was always something else, like another script came up or an edit- editing of something came up, and I really started, when I started writing my book, it was very difficult to um, address things that went on in my life that I was like... Um, was embarrassed about like I, I didn't feel like I was stronger I should have been stronger and I don't know because I, I feel like a lion now like I wouldn't let anything take me down or anybody take me down and I was kind of like looking back I was like wow I was really weak then and my book is one I want my book as your book was as I read it, it was a book to empower people and make them think motivationally and what I feel like is that I want to express to women that have been deep down or, you know, been abused or, you know, whatever, have gone through really bad times in life to empower them. Because I look back and I'm like, damn, this second skin is nice because I would not put up with any kind of crap. We just we just bash Blue Cross Blue Shield before you got on, which they're probably going to call me tomorrow morning and drop my <laughs> insurance policy. That's not funny. Don't, don't, don't nod it. Oh, he said they can't do that. Thank God, because they also think they might do that to me. Um, but I do feel empowered. So, you know, trauma brings out, it's like um, SEAL Team 6 I watched last night on the History Channel. And once again, we love my, I love my uh, military guys. Um, but SEAL Team 6, you know, you go to war, and it's who comes out walking with their head up and who stays behind for the, the man down that proves what kind of strength you are and what kind of character. And I hope that my kids can look back at me and go, you know, my mom really tried to be a better person. And her sole goal after was to help other people. And I think that we a lot like it in that way. You hit the, ma- you're the male yeah, version it's, of it's, me. Your kids are seeing that. Right. Your kids are seeing that right now with what you're doing. Everything you're doing, all the people you're speaking to, all the engagements that you have to go to. They're watching you do that right now, so of course they're going to say that. And guys, I like my engagement because I get to buy new clothes. <laughs> we get to buy. We. I don't always run around in my uh, blood ugly t-shirts and sweatshirts, but we get to buy new clothes. All right. Well, Mike, um, 
I'm, get, I'm getting the four-minute wrap-up thing. So tell me, um, is there anything that I haven't broached? Because people, I know that the beginning of the show was kind of a, it, it was a difficult journey, because, but it really wasn't. We talked about some major abuse issues, and but we saw how she conquered it and um, became a, you know, better. And it's, it's cr- inc- oh, my God, I wish I could tell you all who this is. Uh, incredible, successful person. And then, and we have Mike on, who is, went through a divorce and didn't really, you know, have any kind of abuse mm-hmm. or whatever, but he had a fire in him to build a second life for himself, which has turned out to be amazing, and he looks amazing. I just have to say, if you get his book, he looks amazing. <laughs> that six-pack is amazing. Um, but like you, like you said, you know, all the book, all I want to do with the book is inspire somebody to change their life if they're not happy. Even if you're somewhat happy, you can make yourself better. And just go out there and enjoy every day. You know, you never know when that day is going to come that you can wind up in a hospital or you can be diagnosed with an illness or, you know, some kind of trauma is going to hit you. You have to just enjoy every day. And, and if, if you get that from the book, then I did my job. And I'll say yeah, this with my... basically it. I, sometimes I'll call him. I remember I was sitting outside the jewelry store. I was going to get my daughter's prom dress. I mean, prom jewelry. And I was, like, so bummed. And he's like, Mr. Happy. I mean, it's like the the, the seven dwarves. I would have been grumpy. And he was Mr. Happy. <laughs> I was like, do you have to be so damn happy all the time? I mean, can't you just have one freaking bad day along with me? I was having a really bad day. But Mike is like Mr. Upman. I don't know what he's smoking, eating juicing but he's a happy man but mike i'm gonna like let you cruise off and i love you and thank you for sharing your story of success with me and i hope that we all could be successful as you and i will text you and let you know how this is and i'm gonna spend the last three minutes with my captain bart who would put his headphones okay. back on to talk with me i love you mike Mwah. so the name the name don't forget so they know the name is blood ugly mm-hmm. the attitude that defines you okay and, and did phone, you see where I blogged about? Did you see where I blogged about you the other day? It was really cute. I sent it to uh, you. No, I didn't. I've, I've been working on so many things right now. Okay, that well, I blogged and it got my, like a my social it, media for it me. Got like five hundred likes. So FYI, there you go. All right, so um, okay, I'm gonna have to catch up on it this weekend. Okay, I love you, Mike. Okay, all right, all Mr. Right. Mr. Pilot, you have to quit shooting me um, <laughs> pilot signs. Are you with me? Or are you just in your atmosphere of the Trump elections? No, I'm also the technical director here. <laughs> and how are you feeling about the Trump things? Don't get into political views. Just I'm not. I think it's great. No. Okay. Well, th- you know what? Th- having a sec- I know having a second conversation with you is not. G- you cannot have a conversation with you walking around the station back and forth. You're off the air, right? No, no, we're on the air. Oh, you're still on the air. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's thought... he's walking around the station. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, so anyway, Mike, I'm gonna let you go, and I'm gonna okay. wind it up with everybody. Okay. I want to thank everybody to come to Cosmopolitans with Lauren, and we will see you at eight o'clock next Thursday night. Cosmopolitans with Lauren. Thank you very much. Well, I still have a minute. That's why you can't shoot me signs. This is funny because y'all get the behind the funny scenes. Like, you know, when after a movie rolls and you get the behind scenes where things are funny, this would be the behind scenes funny moment. That The real, the goof reel. We're at a goof reel right now. Call a blooper reel. Yeah, we're at a blooper reel to tell you the truth because he he blooped us up because he was giving me an evil look just two seconds ago and then now he is acting like nothing happened and I don't really know what happened. I don't know why we finished early, but we're in a blooper reel. So if y'all want to record this and play this back to me later, that's okay. I'm okay with it. We screwed up. We got an a- nobody we- screwed up. We got a minute. You just didn't realize I have to go check the. <laughs> Our connection with New York. We have. I'm sorry. We have a minute of uh, free space. You know what? It's okay. Thirty seconds. We have thirty seconds of free space. So I could actually say anything I wanted to right now. Like I could say um, anything. There's, there's super a, cadre fragilistic. 
Yeah, and right now, because he keeps rolling his eyes at me, I could say something really mean, but I won't because it'll be on air, and then y'all will throw it back to me tomorrow afternoon. I just want to tell you that I love the fact that y'all love Cosmopolitans with Lauren on Facebook, Lauren Damrich on Facebook. If you send me any ideas of shows or anything you want to do, just send it to me. I'll read it over and look at it. Always looking for advertisers, too, so... Thank you for joining on with me, and I look forward to next week. We're going to have a crazy, exciting show. I can't even tell you who's going to be on, but I'm going to tell you it's a big person that's in the movie industry that is excited to be on our show. So, All right, Matt. You're ready. We're sending it back to you. Hey, wake up. Bye.